Hey everyone, Spud here from Spud's Games. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm gonna run you through another CRT curbside find that I turn into an RGB gaming beast. Stay tuned. Okay, so gaming beast or RGB beast might have been a little bit over the top to describe this CRT. It's only a little 14 inch uh, Trinitron. I think the model number is a KVG14S1. Uh, it is a BG1S chassis. So um, it was quite early on when we talk about the, the black curved Trinitrons, but being a BG1S chassis, uh, I know just from the research that I've done and the ones that I've done before, it's going to be quite an easy, quite an easy RGB modification. So before I get into the RGB modification itself, just a couple of things. One, don't try this if you're not, uh, I suppose, confident working around electricity. Um, you don't really have to work on anything live in this, but if you're not confident, if you're not good with the soldering iron, probably give this a miss. Um, I'm not going to show you guys how to solder in this video. That's not what it's about. What it is about is just to show you how you can turn something uh, for free, uh, something you find on the side of the road, something quite basic into something that's very useful when we're talking about RGB gaming. So before I get into the modification itself and some detail, what I'll do is I'll take the back off this. Uh, I'll give you guys a bit of a look inside. There's not too much to these Trinitrons. Uh, it's quite empty inside. Uh, but you know, we'll have a look at the tube number and, and you know, how dirty it is inside. I think I did give this a clean. I did this a little while ago. Um, and we'll just have a look at uh, the modification itself, but I will talk you through it in more detail after we do that side of things. So I've grabbed the camera off the tripod now, and we'll just go through the internals of the, the CRT. It is a little bit dusty still. Um, you know, I might give that a quick dust before I put the cover back on. You know, it's pretty basic inside these, these small Trinitrons. In fact, any one of these older Trinitrons, the BG ones, uh, regardless of the size, they are pretty empty. They're pretty standard, really. Um, but for those who want to look at the tube number, there it is there. You know, obviously a Sony tube. Then we come around, and the bit when we look around, or the bit we focus on when we're doing our RGB modification, is I'll just zoom in there, is this little section here. It's common on all the BG1 chassis. You can see where I plug my wires in there. And they go up to the side here of the, um, of the CRT. I don't put them on the back for these ones. Um, purely because there's nowhere on the back to mount them. You know, I could mount them to this uh, here if I wanted to drill these out, uh, but that's actually a heat sink for a, a chip that's on the other side, which gets quite warm. So I don't really want to use that. Uh, the RF outlet is pretty horrid. I can probably clean that up, but in all honesty, I'm never ever going to use it. The RCAs are pretty clean, so I'm going to use them for sound and sink, obviously. So uh, all in all, it's not too, it wasn't too bad of a CRT considering it being out in the weather. Um, you know, it's a little bit dusty inside, but it's certainly not nowhere near as bad as I've seen before. For blanking on this one, I'll run you through this a little bit later. Um, you'll see a cable, this back white one here, that actually comes from underneath the board. I pick up uh, 5 volts off one of the chips underneath, the 5 volt regulator, uh, and that becomes my blanking. So there's not too much to these. Um, that's the, I suppose, that's the look of the CRT or, or look inside the CRT. Um, and what, what we'll do now is we'll actually get stuck into the, um, the modification itself and how we did it. So before I get stuck into how I did the modification, run you through some photos and inst instructions and whatnot, a couple of questions just to address. The first one I get asked a lot is, why do I even bother modding these old um, CRTs? Uh, maybe not so much this model, but even the ones with component. Um, and I get asked a lot to, uh, what's the difference between RGB and component? Um, I'm not gonna get right into the details of it because there's a heap of information on Google and, and whatnot, and uh, I'm certainly no expert in it. But uh, particularly for the component TVs that I modify for RGB, even though they have components, um, is purely because my old video game consoles don't output component. Um, now, I usually get that question asked from a lot of the guys in the US. Um, a lot of their TVs had component as standard, and the comment usually is, oh, you know, you can buy um, transcoders and, and adapters that you can go from RGB to component. Well, that's exactly right. If that's, that's your preference uh, to do that, I have no problems with you guys doing that whatsoever. 
Uh, and, and if you're not confident in soldering and pulling a CRT apart, I, I would 100% agree that's the best, best path. But for me, um, the devil's in the detail, so to speak. So um, what I don't like about uh, that side of things is I'm adding a device into uh, the system where I don't need really need to have it. So whenever you add electronics and a device into something like that, as we all know, it creates lag. Now, regardless of whether it's um, noticeable or not noticeable, um, for me, it's just the fact that I've had to add a device in and it's created lag. You know, I don't have to do that. Uh, if I don't have to do that, I don't want to do that. Um, and for me, RGB uh, has a, a more natural picture when it's coupled with the right devices. So you have, a, a, for instance, a Mega Drive that outputs RGB, you have a CRT that accepts RGB. Um, that married together, for me, always gives a little bit better picture quality than something, an RGB, um, through a transcoder to, to component into a, a CRT. Uh, for me, it doesn't always represent 100% accuracy of, the, um, of what it would be if it was in its natural form, which is RGB to RGB. So that's just my preference um, and the way I think about things. Um, and also, too, those... Um, adapters, and they're not cheap. I mean, there are cheap ones out there, don't get me wrong, but they're usually quite bad in quality, and you certainly don't get the, the quality of signal that you probably should be expecting. Um, but the, the good ones, and there are some good ones out there, don't get me wrong, they are quite expensive. They can be a couple of hundred dollars, if not, you know, $500, so to speak. So um, that's a lot of money to fork out just to have a device in between that and that uh, to make your picture look good. So uh, if I can spend 10, maybe $15 in an hour of my time getting the same picture quality over spending three, four, five hundred dollars on something would, which would probably give me very, very similar um, quality, then for me it's a no-brainer. You know, I have the skills to do it, then I just do it. So uh, that's that's the reason why I do it. Uh, it doesn't really represent this TV because it doesn't have component, but um, for some of the other CRTs that I've modded that do have component, that's probably the best way I can describe why I do it. The other reason why I do it, and it's quite obvious, is it gives me another set of terminals. So component um, was always something, you know, you see a lot of DVD players have, for instance. So if I have an RGB for RGB devices, and I have component for component devices, I'm not trying to chop and change and share uh, the same input. So, uh, that's that's another good reason why I add an RGB input, if I can, to uh, an already component-enabled uh, CRT. So with that addressed uh, and that spoken about, let's get into the modification itself. So the first thing you always do when you're looking at modifying uh, a CRT to accept RGB is you've got to have the service manual available. There's some really good detail in those service manuals. Um, and just because one CRT does it one way, it's not the same for all CRTs. They're all different. They all have different resistor values. They all have different circuitry. Even um, same chassis, so a BG1S Trinitron chassis in a, you know, a 34 centimeter could slightly be different than a BG1S in a 54 centimeter or a 52 centimeter or whatever size they come in. Um, you know, I always tend to find the resistor values can change. Sometimes they're the same, but you always check the service manual when you're doing an RGB modification. The things you're looking for are the jungle chip uh, model number because that will tell you a lot about whether the CRT can actually accept RGB. Uh, it'll also tell you the blanking voltage that's required uh, on it as well, which are two key uh, points of information. So I've, I've come across a lot of people who do the BG1S chassis and the BG2S chassis. I think I even did one before. Uh, for another curbside pickup in one of my other videos. Um, and I see a lot of comments, and I must admit, I was guilty of this right at the very beginning as well. I saw the RGB inputs on the board itself and thought, hey, beauty, I'll just plug straight into that, put my blanking in, not really research anything else, and just see how it goes. Turn it on, I get an RGB picture, beauty, must work, must be all good. Now, that can be okay in some instances, and you will get a, a picture, but when you take a step back and you understand the circuitry of it, the, the picture that you're getting could be, get, could be better because there's a good chance you're actually not correctly attenuating the RGB lines because when you investigate it further, there's already resistors and whatnot in that circuit 
um, that you haven't factored in when you've done your RGB terminations. So let's get into the modification itself. As I'm gonna talk here, I'm gonna throw up some photos and some indicators so you know um, exactly what I did and the resistor values, etc., that I used. So first up, if we go to the service manual, it is a little bit tricky because the way it's drawn isn't exactly what happens internally on the CRT. It does show the header or the spot where you inject the CRT and it does show RGB and blanking in that particular header or that spot. But if you actually follow the schematic through, the blanking line gets, uh, or it shows you where the blanking line goes exactly. But when you pull up the RGB terminals on the diagram on the jungle chip, they actually go nowhere. Or when I say nowhere, they get terminated to ground. And it looks, you look at it and go, okay, righto, I'll just plug straight into this. But in fact, what it does, it actually goes to that same header, but it's not really represented in the service manual. So in saying that, you've just got to be aware that even though the blanking line is shown all the way through, the RGB lines go all the way through. They follow, follow the same path and then they terminate into the uh, RGB jungle chip itself. Now you will notice um, when I zoom in here on the jungle chip, on the RGB lines, there's already resistors in circuit. So it's critical that we find out what those resistors are to ground, because if we go ahead and just terminate our standard 75 ohm termination on our RGB lines, there's a good chance that we're gonna end up with the wrong value on those RGB lines. So for this particular CRT, what I did was I actually removed those resistors. So whatever value they were, I just take them out. You can check what those resistors are, and whatever those resistors are, you can then work out what resistors you need to put on your RGB terminations at your RCAs on the actual termination itself, where your console plugs into the side. Now, if you don't wanna pull those resistors off, I will let you know what it was. So those resistors that I pulled off were actually 150 ohm surface mount resistors. So if I went ahead and didn't think about anything and just did a standard 75 ohm termination at the RCAs, I actually would have ended up with a 50 ohm termination overall. It sounds a little bit weird, I know, in the way electronics works, but if you Google uh, parallel resistor circuit calculation and you, know, and you throw in your 75 that you would have put in, you throw in the 150 ohm resistors that are already in circuit, it would give you a 50 ohm termination. Now, this is what I was referring to before. That will probably work still. That's not a problem, but is it correct? That's the main thing. So back to this photo underneath, you can actually see I've pulled the surface mount resistors off and I've replaced them with 75 ohm resistors. So I only have one set of resistors now on each of those RGB lines and that resistor is 75 ohms. I have no idea why they put 150 ohms there to start with. It may have had something to do with the jungle chip um, and making sure that was terminated correctly even though there's no signal there, you still had to have a certain termination of a certain value for the jungle chip to work properly. Not 100% sure, I don't get into that sort of detail. So that's the RGB line sorted out in these BG1. So you can see where you could have just went straight ahead, dug straight into it, put your RGB lines in, terminated with 75 ohms in. You probably would have got a good picture. Actually, I've tested it before and you do, you, you still get a high quality picture. It does have a couple of brightness issues uh, and you can adjust them out just with your brightness dials. But once again, it's probably not the correct way of doing it. So what the blanking does, or the blanking switch does, and there's a, there's a, you always have one on the side. So normally when you have a SCART RGB enab enabled TV, a lot of your old consoles would have come with a sort of a three to five volt um, pin on that SCART, that when you plug it in, it actually sends a signal to the jungle and the TV automatically switches to RGB. What we're doing here is kind of simulating that. You know, we've got RCAs on the side, so we don't really have, you know, a separate set of cables coming from the console for blanking. So what we do is we just take the voltage from the CRT and run it through a switch and tell the jungle chip when it needs to RGB blank. So when the TV receives that signal, what happens is whatever's on the screen, the RGB, it doesn't have, it's not an input, so to speak. The RGB actually overlays whatever's on the screen. And unless you've got a sync promptly, you won't get a proper picture. I'll touch on the sync last, but uh, for now we'll just focus on the blanking. So when I Google this jungle chip, I know the RGB blanking on this is anywhere between one to three volts. So it's very hard to find somewhere on this circuit that's anywhere between one to three volts that I can tap. I'm sure you could find it somewhere, but what I found easiest is to start with a nice consistent voltage 
which is straight off the 5 volt regulator. Coming straight off the 5 volt regulator, I know it's going to give me a nice, safe, clean voltage. I don't have to worry about any other components that you know it's, it's going through. It's just it's basically 5 volts straight off the regulator. So I know what you said before, wait a minute, the blanking's 1 to 3 volts. You just said you're taking 5 volts. So somewhere, obviously in between coming off the 5 volt regulator and the blanking switch, I need to reduce that 5 volts down to between 1 and 3 volts. Now normally in my previous videos, what I had done is I created a voltage divider. So what that is, is you grab two resistors at the same value, it doesn't matter what value it is. Usually you can use 75 ohm resistors, which I generally use, that's fine. It could be 100, it could be 250, whatever. So you grab your two resistors in series, twist one end together, okay? One leg feeds down and one leg will feed to ground. That center tap will halve your voltage for you. So if I have five volts going through the resistors to ground and that center tap off the resistor halfway, so it's, you've got the two resistors either side coming in the middle of it, that voltage was then reduced by half. As long as the resistor values are exactly the same. The two resistor values connected together, as long as they're the same, they'll halve the voltage. You can also have ratios. So for instance, if I wanted five volts, uh, but I didn't want to go to two and a half, maybe I wanted to go to three. Uh, I could adjust those two resistors based on ratios to match the voltage. So um, I don't know if that kind of makes sense, but there are calculators on Google, just Google you know, voltage divider calculation. And you can pop in a couple of different resistor values in series and it will work out for you what the output voltage will be. I don't need to do that. I know two and a half volts is good enough for me. So that's what I'll be using. So I mentioned before in other videos, I actually manually created a voltage divider at the blanking switch. So I had five volts coming into the switch. I had, you know, my resistors and then the center tap coming off back into the jungle. What I figured out on this chassis, and I'm yet to investigate if it's the same on other chassis, there's already a resistor on that blanking line. Okay, so by already having a resistor on that blanking line, if I know what that resistor is, all I have to do is add a resistor of the same value in series, and my voltage is gonna halve. Now, I think in this one, the resistor value was 470 ohm. I've circled it here on the schematic. All I have to do, somewhere between the five volts through the switch back to the blanking, is add the same resistor in that circuit somewhere. It doesn't matter if it's before the switch, doesn't matter if it's after the switch, as long as it's in there somewhere, it will halve the voltage down to two and a half volts for me by using the voltage divider method. Now, I never knew that was in there before. Uh, this is one of the things I've learned as I go. Um, but you can utilize the resistor that's already in circuit rather than trying to manually create your own voltage divider, which can be a little bit messy and a little bit of a pain in the backside. So that's the blanking side taken care of. We've grabbed it off our five volt regulator. We've matched it, we've added a resistor in which matches the resistor that's already in the blanking lines. We've halved our voltage. We've got down to two and a half volts now that feeds back into the, the blanking spot on the, on the header. So we know our blanking's right, our RGB's right. It's now terminated with 75 ohm resistors rather than something that may, may or may not have been 75 ohms depending on what your resistor values you use and what, what's already in there. Um, now we need to look at our sink. Our sink's the easiest one because you don't need to do anything. So what we use with these particular CRTs, you can actually do the same thing with if you've got component on your CRT that you've modified. So I use composite sink. I don't have to add in separate terminals for composite sink because this TV already has composite. So for the sink, all I do is I plug my sink straight into the AV1 composite and my sink is taken care of. I said before, you can also use your component terminals. So the green terminal on a component set of terminals is actually um, Luma. So you might have heard the term sync on uh, composite or C-Sync. You might have also heard the term sync on Luma. So that's all you're doing. You can sync on your composite by plugging your sync wire onto your composite RCA, or you can sync on Luma if you've got a component TV by utilizing that green terminal on your component. You can also use Sync on Luma if you have an S-Video terminal. S-Video has Chroma and Luma separated, which is essentially color and brightness separated. Um, and you can use the Luma terminal on the S-Video uh, as your Sync if you wanted to use that. So that's it for this RGB modification. It's super simple. Um, I'll put some photos up after I finish talking here. You know, there might be half a dozen photos or so. I'll just 
So you can just see what the wiring looks like. You can see the RCAs, how I've terminated that. You know, please don't leave comments about how messy my wiring is. I already know that. Sometimes I do it late at night. Um, but, you know, it, it works. So um, it'll give you, at least to give you guys an idea of how I do things. So I've just thrown a 240p test suite on here and it's, it's not too bad. Um, the tube might need a little bit of our yoke, might need a little bit of a tilt, but for a little 34 inch center, a little 34 centimeter Trinitron, uh, a Freebie, I'm probably not going to bother with it because when I'm playing a game and whatnot, I'm really on this size screen, I'm not going to notice it. I'll actually give the yoke a bit of a tilt. You might see it move, you might not move, see it move. The camera might not pick it up, but it's only the slightest that needs to move, so I'm just going to leave it. The geometry is pretty good. The lines are pretty straight. Um, and the overall picture of it, I'll just... I'll throw a game on here. I'll just pick one. You know, the picture is, is a really good quality picture, so... I'm not going to muck around too much um, with the geometry on this, just purely because, um, you know, it's prob probably not worth it at this stage. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about the geometry because the geometry on this is pretty good, as you can see there. Um, we, it might be a bit small, but I had a quick look at this, and there's really no need for adjustment on on this, particularly such a CRT that's so small. Uh, you know, if it's a big, you know, 69 centimeter CRT, and you had some bad geometry, then you really do notice it. But on something this small, uh, you don't really notice it. So I'm not going to spend hours upon hours trying to get exact convergence right, or if the you know, the yoke needs a slight tilt, it's just not worth it. Uh, because I can guarantee you, once you're playing a game, you don't notice it. So uh, I'm going to leave the geometry as is. Uh, if you want to see me set geometry, um, go back to some of my previous videos. All the Sonys are pretty much the same. Uh, they just have different levels, I suppose, of the menu itself. Um, but the code, etc., on the remote, they're all the same. So head back to one of my previous videos, which does run you through the geometry, uh, if you're interested in that. So that's it, guys. Just a quick video um, of another uh, CRT that I picked up and was able to RGB mod. Still yet to decide what I'm going to do with this. Being 34 centimeters, they just come in really handy, just for testing and whatnot. But um, you know, there's only so much space one guy has, so it may end up for sale. It may not. It depends on how many times I trip over it in the garage or it falls out of the wardrobe or whatnot. So, um, but that's it for the video. I must say, uh, thanks everyone for subscribing to my channel. Uh, somehow I've ended up over 700 subscribers, so I don't know what was so interesting about my videos, but I'm glad people seem to like them. Um, and I've said it before, you know, it's, it's really a bit overwhelming that so many people are actually watching these videos. So uh, it is nice. Um, so, you know, if you want to see more videos, every time I see that subscriber count go up, it makes me want to do more videos. So, um, you know, if you do like the videos, please subscribe to the channel, um, which will keep me interested and keep me making more videos. So, but that's it from me. Um, and until the next video, guys, I'll see you then.